Hi everybody, I'm Stephen Murray. I'm the game director of Stellaris. It's been a little bit over a week since we've released the first Contact Story Pack, and it's been great hearing your stories and experiences. A couple of days ago, we pushed the 373 hotfix in order to fix a couple of the more pressing issues that had come up. Some of these issues include every single atomic pre-FTL civilization will no longer nuke themselves if nobody's watching. Contingency worlds will now be properly cracked by the devolving beam. The solar punk empire will no longer stay pre-FTL if you decide to steal from them. The Solar Punk Empire will also no longer gain a new fleet every single month. We fixed a bug with cloaked ships that could not progress some special projects inside closed borders. Admirals no longer kill themselves when you upgrade the MSI flagship. The Separatist planet will no longer nuke themselves if you lose your capital to space fauna. We fixed Liberation Wars, not showing up for payback empires as well as some others and many more. Overall, Canis Minor was the most stable release we've actually ever had on Stellaris, to the point where red flags were being raised whether the Trasher Reporter was actually working properly. We're currently working on another patch, planned for a few weeks from now, to resolve more bugs, balance issues, and add some localization fixes. So far, some of the items of particular interest include, we fixed an issue where a payback empire using the end threat payback war goal against MSI could end with a whimper rather than as intended. We gave the Grand Herald Archaeotech components. We buffed MSI by giving them some bonus naval capacity and starting technologies, the Raise Awareness espionage operation now prevents pre-FTL awareness from naturally decaying for five years, and hive minds with both the Cordyceptic drones and Stargazer civics now start with three reanimated amoebas. Please keep posting bug reports in our forums, they're a great help to us. Speaking of other reports that are a great help, and since I mentioned the crash reporting tool earlier, I have a message to share from our tech lord. Hey, my name is Lorenzo and I'm your friendly neighborhood tech lord, and I wanted to spend a couple of seconds to talk about uh, what happens between when we press the release button and your game starts being downloaded on your computer. Game development is no joke, like any other business, and releasing a new patch is not the beginning of the end, but barely the end of the beginning. Our team puts heroic effort into delivering the best product to you, but hey, mistakes or oversights happen. Sometimes the result is a hilarious bug, like the tendency of pre-FTL societies to prematurely end their lives by nuclear means. Sometimes the result is this dreaded crash reporter window. Like no battle plan survives contact with the enemy, no patch survives contact with the players. But we are aware of this, and every time we release a new patch, somewhere in our offices, there's a group of developers sitting down, constantly monitoring the stability of the game, patiently waiting for the inevitable fire to spark. Luckily, most of the time there's no real fire, just some tiny candle flames. And this brings me straight to my point. Thank you for all your reports. When you press that send button, detailed information on the crash is collected and sent to us for investigation. This info is usually enough to point out the problem, but often not enough to identify the cause of it. That's when your comments come into play. Tell us what you were doing when the crash happened. Even the most tiny detail could help us. They say that an image is worth 1000 words. Let me tell you a beautiful story in four acts with an image then. First, we have a crash report. Then we have a crash report that says, was tapped out and in the Discord window while game was loading. Then we have another crash report that says, same person as before, was in the game window this time, probably same issue as before. Further details, was attempting to load a save game from the previous update. During this latest crash, the game failed while loading the save file. Also, the music is still going, even as I write this report, but the window is gone. Then a fourth crash report. Same person as the last two times again. This time, just went to the main menu from launcher, was able to load fine but loading old save game from there caused a crash while on loading map graphics. So issue is definitely incompatibility between the two. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, anonymous player. Your reports were immensely useful in finding the issue and finally fixing it. Thanks, Lorenzo. And thanks again to all of you that submit detailed bug reports and crash logs. The more information we have, the easier it is to track down some of these sometimes troublesome issues. So what's next? We're not quite ready to talk about the 3.8 Gemini release yet, but here's a peek at one thing that we are going to start rolling out in it. These nested concepts will initially only be present in galaxy settings, but we'll be rolling it out to other areas in the future. Next week, we'll be going over more of the things planned to go into the 374 patch. See you then. Thanks for watching the official Stellaris channel on YouTube. And uh, remember to like and subscribe if you want to be with us in the future.